This is a structural engineering portfolio, and it's crazy how attaching just two pieces of paper to the back of your resume can become your job landing superpower. As some of you might be aware, I recently quit my graduate structural engineering job at a global design company and started working at a mid-sized engineering firm. But what you definitely won't know is that during my job hunt, I did something I'd never done before. And what I did was create a structural engineering portfolio. For those of you that don't know what a portfolio is, it's basically a short booklet that showcases your past work. And the idea is, is that the reader can get a better understanding of the quality and the type of work that you produce by actually taking a look at some of your past work. People in the film and television industry have been doing this for years through creating things like self tapes and getting headshots taken and now in more recent times this same idea has trickled into fields like web design and journalism and now engineering. Currently engineering fields like software, electrical and mechanical are pretty used to the idea of creating a portfolio. But as far as I know this same idea hasn't become a stock standard practice throughout the civil and structural engineering fields. So in this video, I'm going to share what I learned from making a structural engineering portfolio. I'll go into more detail on what a portfolio is and why I think you should make one, what qualities make a good portfolio. I'm going to take you through mine, and then I'm going to show you the full process of making a portfolio from scratch with a free template at the end. Okay, so just to make sure that we're all on the same page, a portfolio is a collection of work you've done in the past that showcases the skills and experiences that you have in a particular area. And what a portfolio actually looks like is just a couple of pages with images and explanatory text that gets attached to the back of your resume. All right, so now why should you go through the effort and actually make a portfolio? Well, in my opinion, there's three main reasons you should. Number one is that it will differentiate you from other candidates. Majority of people when applying to new jobs are only going to include a resume and perhaps a cover letter if it's required. But by also including a portfolio, straight away you're giving the recruiter a reason to progress your application because you've gone the extra mile and don't blend in with all the other applications that all look the same. Number two is that portfolios provide context. A good portfolio easily allows the reader to visualize the projects you've worked on and quickly comprehend the level of skill you have without tediously having to read through your resume. And reason number three is that a portfolio demonstrates your creativity and initiative. Given that a portfolio is not currently a requirement for job applications in the civil engineering related disciplines, by actually providing a portfolio, you're showing the recruiter that you're someone who is proactive and that you're someone who is proud of their past projects. All right, now that I've convinced you that making a portfolio is worth your time, let's talk about four important things to consider when making one that'll really make it good. Okay, so first, a good portfolio highlights a range of skills. This means that you should choose projects that have shown that you've worked with a variety of software programs, materials, and structures. Second, include only relevant projects. So for example, if you're applying to a structural engineering job, don't include projects from your civil or geotechnical engineering classes or internships. Third, include only your best work. So this means pick the best projects you've done during your classes or internships and showcase those projects. And if you're a student, and you're thinking, well, none of the projects I've done so far are any good, I've got two options for you. The first one only applies if you're a first or second year student and you've still got plenty of university projects ahead of you, but what I would recommend doing is changing your approach when it comes to completing your university projects. Right now, you're probably only completing your university projects to a quality that will allow you to pass the course, and that's why you wouldn't want to showcase them on your portfolio. So what you need to do is change your approach and start completing your university projects to a quality that will make them a portfolio-worthy project project because now you're not only completing the projects to pass a course, but you're also completing these projects to help you land a job. Okay, and the second option you can do regardless of where you are in your university journey, and what it is is making personal projects. For example, you could try and design a simple steel frame structure or maybe even just a concrete slab. With personal projects, it's really up to you what you want to do, so just pick something and give it a go. Alright, and the fourth and final thing that a good portfolio does is tell a story. Make sure that your portfolio explains what you had to do, how you did it, and then where appropriate, what the result was. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through my portfolio and then I'm gonna erase it completely and show you how to build a portfolio from scratch. All right, so starting at the top, I have my name, the type of role I'm applying for, and also the university I graduated from. Underneath this, I have my contact info. Here I included my email, my phone number, a link to my LinkedIn profile, and also the state and country I live in. Below the title block, I've broken the page up into three sections where I showcase each project. Up the top is my first project, which is a portal frame building with an overhead crane that I did while I was at Jacobs. On the left, I have a screenshot of an architectural drawing of the building, so it's easier to visualize the project. And on the right, I have a screenshot of a portal frame with a bending moment diagram drawn on it, and it's taken from the structural analysis program Space Gas. In the text section below, I have two headings, what and how, 
now. And the idea here is that under the what heading, I would show what responsibilities I had. And then under the how heading, I would show how I executed those responsibilities. For example, in the what section of this project, I wrote, design and provide calculation packs for review on the main portal frame members, Perlins and Bracing, and provide detailed markups of designs for drafting team. Then in the how section, I wrote, derived loads from hand calculation and used Excel to create critical load case combination table, use space gas to output design actions, documented design iteration process in Bluebeam and created 2D design drawings in Bluebeam to illustrate design. One thing I do wanna point out here that you may have noticed is that throughout this text, I've bolded any word that highlights a technical skill that someone in my role might have so that it's easy for the reader to pick up on. Okay, and moving on to the second project in my portfolio, which is a reinforced concrete slab analysis that I also did while I was at Jacobs. Notice that again, I'm following the same what and how format and that the pictures I'm showing are from a different software program. And that in this project, I've shown something to do with concrete rather than steel to try and show the reader that I'm confident with this material too. Okay, and the next project in my portfolio was another project I did at Jacobs and this one's a retaining wall design. With this particular project, I just wanted to show that I know what sort of loads and checks we need to do when designing earth retaining structures. And I think with the little bit of text that I have in the diagram I've drawn, I've done that well enough. Okay, and over the page, I've got three more projects and the one up the top is from my thesis that I completed during my time at ADG and the two down the bottom are ones that I completed while at university. Start Starting with my thesis up the top, I decided to separate the headings for this project out into three sections because for this particular project, I actually had tangible results that I could share. And similar to what I've done for my projects on the first page, I again have said what I had to do, which in this case was predict the design life under several magnitudes of alternating stress, how I did it, which was used ancestor model timber and compared results with laboratory testing and literature. And finally, what the results were, which was that the model was highly sensitive to mesh size and that more experimental data was needed to determine the reliability. Okay, and moving on to my first university project, which I've labeled multi-story office building. Here I've got a screenshot of what the building looked like on the left. And then on the right, I've got a screenshot of a column and middle strip sketch that I did when doing the slab design. Again, I'm explaining exactly what I had to do on the left and I'm trying to bold as many technical skills that I had to use as possible. And then on the right, how I executed those tasks. Okay, and finally, the last project on my portfolio was a steel portal frame warehouse design that I did for a class at the end of second year. Here I've got some screenshots of some hand sketches that I drew of the geometry and also some from space gas that I used when designing the main portal frame members and also the bracing. In the what section of this project, I wrote that I had to economically design the rafters, columns, bracing, purlins, and connections of a portal frame warehouse. And then in the house section, I wrote that I did this by calculating dead, live, and wind loads in accordance with relevant Australian standards, and by performing hand calculations alongside space gas analysis to derive design actions, and that I sized members from first principles slash member capacity tables. All right, now that I've shown you what my portfolio looks like, let me erase it completely and show you how you can build something similar from scratch. Also, if you like the way my portfolio looks, you can download my free Canva template through the link in the description. Okay, so first up, let's begin by doing the title block. Here you need to add your name, title, university, and contact details. Next, make a list of all the projects you've done during university and any internships, and select the ones you want to include. From here, you should make a folder on your computer for each project, and put all the photos or screenshots you have from those projects in these folders. After this, you should decide on what order you want to put your projects on your portfolio. Two of the most popular ways are either chronologically or by importance. Chronologically is when you put your most recent projects first and then make your way down, and by importance is when you put the projects that you really want to highlight first. Personally, I like the idea of putting my most important projects first, but it's really up to you. After this, the next step is to include a short and concise title for each project, and make sure when you're doing this to include where you were when you completed the project. Next, add in the pictures that best describe your work on each project. And lastly, let's add some text. The two subheadings that I used to tell a story were what and how, and then under these two subheadings, I used dot points to explain what was going on in my images. When you're doing this, it's important to remember that a portfolio is not a resume and that it shouldn't be very wordy. A portfolio is a document filled with images with just a little bit of text to explain what's going on in those images. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I talk about how I would learn structural engineering if I were to start over, or that video there where I talk about the lessons I learned in my first year of work as a graduate structural engineer. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.